If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss the next one. Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. I've been recently playing around with uh, Lomography's 400 speed Lady Grey, which was kindly sent to me by one of my subscribers and an Instagrammer, Andrew West. And uh, Andrew sent me these rolls of film, two rolls, and he said, uh, have a play with them and see what you think. So I did. And this is that famous walking shot that we all do. So I only shot seven frames of the Lady Grey in the woods and then I got bored. So I decided to call it a day and save the film for another time. It's very quiet here. I was going to come here early in the morning, but I kind of figured out that uh, people would be walking their dogs early in the morning. So I didn't want dogs running around me and stuff like that. So uh, but at the moment, there's a dog. <laughs> So the first thing is, I wasn't sure what Lomography was, to be honest with you. I have heard of it before, but um, I just didn't really understand it too too much. Um, I actually thought it was a, a range of cheap cameras and, um, and that was it, but I didn't realise that was, that was brand in film. So uh, I started to research a little bit about Lomography and to me it sounds quite cool. Basically you just uh, put a roll of film into uh, an SLR camera or a point and shoot camera or, or one of those cheap Holger cameras or whatever. Uh, a box of screw you've got that takes film, 35 mil film, and just go out and shoot the crap out of anything you see. Uh, to me, that sounds great. You know, they, they're suggesting that you shoot from the hip, you shoot from up here, you shoot here, you shoot there, and uh, it doesn't matter what results you get. It's about having fun using film, and then you you send the film off to get developed, to get the prints back, you know, and then you can look to see what you've got. Um, it's not my style of photography, but. Sounds cool to me. I might give it a go one day. But uh, anyway, so that was um, my little research on Lomography. And then I noticed that the uh, Nikos Photography Show on YouTube, great guy, check him out because I'll put a link to the description in this video, but um, he was at Fotokina recently and he interviewed a guy from Lomography. Michael, tell us a little bit about Lomography for to whoever's curious about it. Yeah, well, Lomography started um a bit more than 25 years ago, we started like um, basically it was started as a movement which was about um, the classic Lomo LCA, which is like in a way similar to this one, if anyone still knows. If you want to know more about that, get onto Nikos's channel and uh, have a look. As I said, I'll put the link in the description on this video. So uh, anyway, on to my experiences with it. So I started reading up about this uh, Lomography Lady Grey film, and one of the things I found was that it's actually FOMA 400, which is a FOMA pan film. I didn't want to go and shoot this film blind, uh, so what I decided to do was to do some tests to find out what the optimum film speed was for this film, for my development process, and also the camera. Now, I wasn't too sure how to go about this because it's something that I've, I've tried it in the past with, with bad results, but this time um, I had a little go off camera and I managed to get some decent results. And uh, one of the ways I did that, I used my Nikon FX90, a reliable camera, and started to do a series of tests on um, various ISOs pointed at a blank wall. Now I found this information um, online from a guy called Tom Harfill and I was reading the information and I thought, this don't look too bad, I'm gonna give it a go. And uh, I managed to get some uh, quite satisfactory results out of it. So um, I'll just show you what I, what I was up to and then we'll go in the dark room and I'll show you my results from trying to find the optimum speed for my development process using Lomography Lady Grey 400 or Foma Pan 400. Uh, the first two frames I shot, I covered my hand over the lens just so I can get uh, unexposed, two unexposed frames, which is gonna give me my film base and fog to work with. So I started off my experiment at ISO 500 and I set the Nikon F90X at 500 ISO and then metered towards the wall. And uh, you can see this is my, this is all my scribbles here for the, for the metering I was doing. So the first shot I did at 5.6 aperture and the meter reading gave me at 40th of a second. So I took that photograph. The next shot I took was plus three stops, which then gave me a fifth of a second. And then the next um, shot I took, I went back to 40th of a second and then went minus four stops to, six, uh, to uh, 640th of a second. So that's the first three shots. Then I had to do the same again, exactly the same fashion for 400 speed, 320, 250, 200, 160, 125. 
and so on. And I must admit, it did start, I did actually start to get a little bit confused. I was, as I was hitting the button and writing the stuff down, I started to think, hang on, have I already taken that shot or this shot? And, and, um, but I managed to get around it in, in the end and uh, finish the roll of film. So once I'd finished my series of tests, I then went into the dark room, took the film out of the, out of the camera, stuck it in the uh, tank, and then went ahead and developed the film. Now, I used x -Toll at one part to one part, and I, it was 20 degrees, and I put it in there for 10 minutes. The massive dev chart says uh, for Foma Pan 400, which, which is what I looked at, uh, it says nine and a half minutes, but I put it in there for 10 minutes and uh, just did agitation uh, normally all the way through, then stopped, then fixed, and dried the film out. And then I took it into the uh, dark room on the light box and started to have a look at the negatives. So the idea is what I'm trying to do is find zone one of the zone system. I know nothing about the zone system, but I can certainly look and I can see what's black and I can see what's nearly black. So I was trying to find zone one, which is um, nearly black, not quite jet black. So by looking at the negatives, I was looking at all the um, um, underexposed negatives at the different ISO speeds uh, against the film base and fog, the first two shots that I took. And um, by looking at them visually on the light box, I just started to get some detail in at ISO 200 and, um, and also 250 as well. So uh, the only way to really look at this is to go into the dark room. So that's what I'm gonna do now is uh, go into the dark room, have a little play and show you guys my results at the end. I'll just show you the results on the light box here guys, so this is uh, my 500 test, you can see the three shots that I took, um, so this would be middle grey against the wall, that was uh, the camera's uh, correct exposure, and then I went three stops over, and then I went four stops under, and I did that at 400 speed, at 320, 250, 200, 160 and so on, and I stopped at 125. And then once I did, once I put all these through the tests, um, I then put my cap and uh, my chin on CS, just on the desk, and took a photograph, identical photograph at different speeds. So one was 500, one at 400, one at 320, one at 250, 200, and that was 160. I took one more at 125 there and I don't know what that is, that's why there's a question mark. And that was the um, first part of the film where I put my hand over. So this is what I'm gonna be using in a second because this is my fog and base of the film and this is gonna be jet black. So um, I need to put this on the enlarger and establish how long it takes to reach maximum black. So let's do that now. So I'll take that out. Not too worried about using my hands, not negatives that I want to keep. And I'll put this in my enlarger. This is just a blank negative, there's literally unexposed. So it will be jet black, but I need to find out how long it takes to go jet black. So uh, let's do that test now with a test strip. I've also got a um, grade two, uh, yeah, grade two filter on the enlarger. That's what I'm. That's what I'm going to be using is a grade two enlarger on the multi-grade paper. Um, so it's going to keep the contrast in balance for me. So uh, right, let's put a test strip on. See what we do. Okay, so I've got my unexposed negative now inside the enlarger, and what I'm trying to do is find out how long it takes for this little test strip I've just put in there to reach maximum black. And I'm just gonna do increments of three seconds. Um, before I start, I should say, I've already um, put a image in the enlarger and I've focused it. So it's uh, sharp focus. I won't touch this now throughout the rest of the tests. Uh, Cause if I do it, it'll have, um, it will change what I'm, it will change the, the uh, what I'm doing. So uh, anyway, let's crack on with this. So I've put the test strip in, increments of three seconds. I'm trying to find the maximum black of the paper. There's three seconds there. Six. Nine. Twelve. Fifteen. Eighteen. Twenty-one. 
24 and 27. Right, so we'll put this in the developer and see what happens. Okay, so this is my first test strip to find the uh, maximum black of the paper. Um, you can see I've got 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, I can see 18, and that's it, the rest of it's black. Here, 18 onwards is black. So to reach the maximum black on this paper is taking 18 seconds. I'm gonna write that down. That's what I'm gonna work on, 18 seconds. So I can now take the, um, the blank negative out of here. And I now need to look on the light box to see over so I need to look at my light box to see which ISO speed is just about barely going to give me some information on the film so 500 I could see I've got no information on that at all 400 that's the box speed I've got no information on that at all 320 I can't see I can't see anything on that either 250 I can just start to see information on 250 so let's have a look at 200 I'm just going to take this out of the sleeve and I can see more information on 200 so 250 is so far looking to be the speed for that film with my development process. So um, let's put 250 in the enlarger and do some tests with 250. Okay, so I've just put the 250 ISO um, negative inside the enlarger and I need to do another test with that. So I'll just show you what I'm doing, turn the lights off. There's my test strip there. I'm gonna cover, uh, set my enlarger time to 18 seconds like we established. There it is. And I'm going to cover half of the paper like so and burst light onto it now for 18 seconds and then I'm going to take the card off and expose the whole um, test strip for another 18 seconds so by right um, the, the density of the 250 uh, negative will hold back slightly so I'll have a jet black one side and very very hardly noticeable the difference between the two. That's what I'm looking for. See what happens. And it's done. Okay, let's develop this and see what it looks like. Okay, and there it is. I've just increased the ISO slide on the camera so you can see it. Um, so this was the negative that I shot at 250 ISO, so you can see uh, where the density lies here is slightly lighter than the remaining 18 seconds that I left it for, which has gone to uh, the D-Max, maximum black. So it looks like that, that film is going to be 250 ISO for the way that I develop and, uh, and for that camera as well that I was using. So uh, let's go back to the photographs that I took now. I took one at uh, 500, 400, 320, 250, 200 and 160 ISOs. So let's um, do a couple of comparisons. I'm gonna do the box speed at 400 and I'll make a, another print at 250 and we'll see the difference. Okay, we'll print the uh, 400 ISO image first. And since the start of these tests, I haven't changed anything on the larger at all. Everything's been exactly the same. Um, if I do change any heights or anything, it's just wasted time, so. Everything's exactly the same. 18 seconds is what we just uh, established, so let's turn the lights off. Put a bit of paper in. So this image is uh, 18 seconds box speed, 400 ISO. Well, I'll chuck that in the developer. So just to hang the two prints up, I'll show you this one first, it's still um, hanging out, it's near enough dry, but uh, this was the 400 box speed ISO shot, 
that I took and uh, you can see I've got some it's, I've got detail in, in the cap here that's a white cap but I've lost detail in the camera itself the blacks and the chin and sign uh, the um, fabric on the whatever it is the leatherette stuff on the camera that's all gone um, can hardly see it but if we come over now and look at the 250 uh, 250 ISO the tested you can see now I've got much more detail in the dark areas you can see the leatherette you can see in here maybe um, the cap will just come out a little tiny bit so you can see the cap area here is blown out um, but the rest of the blacks look really smart and I'd rather have decent blacks and then just burn this cap if I needed to and you can see on the other print we've got more detail in the cap it's still blown out in this area um, so you know if this was a print in real life I'd have to do a bit of um, a bit of burning in here maybe a little bit of burning on the lens but uh, the main important thing is I've got detail in my blacks which is um, where I was going and this is at the 250 ISO so for my development process and uh, and that camera I'm probably going to shoot this film and rate it at 250 yeah, so I quite enjoyed that darkroom session, playing around um, with the films earlier on and doing the test and coming in here and, and, and making some tests on, on, on that particular film. Uh, you know, whereas before I would have got out and shot it at 400, come back and developed it as I did earlier on. But by doing those tests, it's, um, you know, whether I've done it right or whether I've done it wrong, I've definitely seen a difference it makes between the box speed of 400 and what I saw at 250 in the print now if any of you guys have, um, have if you've watched this to the end I might be a bit boring I don't know but uh, if you guys are experienced in in rating your own film speeds whether it's FP4 HP5 Tri-X or whatever uh, let us know in the comments how you how you do it I mean I know that you can take the film and you can send it to a lab and if it's a decent lab it you know they'll, they'll, they'll do some tests for you and, and, and what have you but uh, using their, their expensive machinery a densitometer I think it's called but um, you know something that I haven't done before or not to this extent anyway I've dabbled with it in the past and not really had great results but this is the first time that, that uh, I've managed to get a decent result so when I go out and shoot that other lomography role of uh, Lady Grey uh, I'm going to rate it at 250 using that Nikon F90X and also the development process that I used which was the X-Toll one part to one part for 10 minutes at 20 degrees normal agitation and uh, stop and fix so um, anyway I hope you liked the video uh, I certainly learned something from it and if you guys have been great like I say if you're experienced in this stuff stick it in the comments and let me and other people know cheers guys <laughs>